I have been tagged multiple, multiple times about this cosplayer doing a prosthetic 096 face. And I am concerned, but not for the reason you think. You see, we're not in danger from this cosplayer because you have to see 096's actual face. Not a facsimile, not makeup, not a drawing. Has to be the real thing, so don't worry, 096 isn't coming for you. I am concerned about who gave them the reference photo, though. They're gonna die. Sorry about it. And here we have an example of the Ophanim, the classification of angel responsible for guarding the throne of God. You were probably expecting some pretty human with wings, but no. The Bible is Lovecraft country. Oh, it wants to say hi. D2487, you have to get away from that entity now. Forget the bar, just run. Note, subject has made no progress. Possible temporal anomaly? Sir, anomalous pornography addiction is no joke. I am very worried about the efficacy of this mission. Oh, no. Spoilers for the video I'm duetting, so watch that one first. SCP-5886, Object Class Keter. An article and character very dear to my heart because I wrote it. SCP-5886 is a young adult by the name of James Biggio. Young Jim was an average individual until its powers activated, at which point it became a speedster similar to the Flash. The good news is that Jim was also granted the ability to withstand the friction that would be caused by moving at those speeds so its skin wouldn't slough off, and also the ability to think fast enough to react in time. The downside is that when you can think, what we've approximated is 54,000 times faster than the average human, one person saying a sentence takes days to you. Give it a listen on YouTube. Agent Volkov just dared me to say Candyman five times in a mirror. Probably another one of his juvenile pranks, but far be it for me to turn down the opportunity to disprove another urban legend. All right, staff, here we go for science. Candyman. 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 Candy- Wait. I have seen a lot of messed up creatures in my career, just in case it's real. Hey, Chimera, I got a job for you. Yeah, it's because all the shit you did to 999, you- Did you know that there's a cult trying to create their own god, and they might actually pull it off? Oh shit. Here we go again. Worst place in the world. It was adorable. Agent Applier was gonna ask out Agent Nelson, but he was having an acne breakout, so I sent him to Bright for some vanishing cream. He gave him- yeah. WHAT?! That's the last of our supplies. Close this door, lock it, and allow no one in. Good morning, Foundation staff. This is Dr. Theron Sherman. As you're all aware, today is Dr. Jack Bright's birthday. And in return for his countless years of service to the Foundation, we are instituting what will likely be called the Foundation's new purge. For the next 24 hours, the list of things Dr. Bright is not allowed to do at the Foundation is suspended. Good luck. And have fun, kid. Ooh, to answer this question, I get to be like Hank Green and talk about some non-fictional science today. The commenter wants to know if seeing SCP-096's face in your dreams will cause 096 to come after you. As a refresher of the rules, 096 only attacks you if you see its actual face. That includes photographs, even as small as FOUR FUCKING PIXELS, as well as film. It will not attack you if you see an artistic rendering of its face, such as a drawing or a video game sprite. So what if you dreamed SCP-096's face? Would it chase you down? Most likely not, because according to our current scientific understanding of dreams, you would not actually be able to see 096's real face in your dreams. The Neurosciences Institute at Stanford University theorizes that what is most likely happening when we dream is we are mixing and remixing things that we remember from when we were awake. Essentially, if you haven't seen 096 IRL, you're not going to see it in your dreams either. Sleep tight. Mm -hmm. Oh no. Which of you forgot to give the overlords that live above the sky their snacks? It's okay, buddies. I have cool ranch and nacho cheese. Don't be raised. A building. All right, good. The entity has stepped into the containment glyphs. The entity is similar in nature to what we call sack bo Oh, I'm giving the thaumaturgical department a piece of my mind later. Oh, you finally arrived. What the hell are you wearing? It's my ass kicking outfit, bitch. Oof. Located in Greenville, South Carolina, the It's Raining Men phenomena inspired the song of the same name. 
It was too hot for InfoSec to keep it off the charts. As a child, I thought sharks were my friends. I know better now. You must be truly desperate to come to me for help. Hold up. Uh, are we the bad guys? You stare devil to contain 096. This is just a hypothesis, but I'm pretty sure Daredevil would actually activate 096. Point one, Matt Murdock does not see with his eyes, but echolocation and hearing and all that kind of stuff. This allows Matt to see the outlines of things. And if my five minutes of Google research has done me well, that's exactly how blind people's brains react in real life. They still process in the visual processing centers. I mean, real world people aren't Daredevil accurate, but you get my point. And we know that all 096 needs is for its face to be in your subconscious. It doesn't need you to literally see it. That's how the photograph and the four fucking pixels work. You don't even need to know you've seen it. Final thesis, if you show Matt Murdock a picture of 096, he's just gonna see a silhouette and so it's not gonna affect him. But if you showed him 096, he'd see the outline with his echolocation and he'd get it. So the other week I made SCP-173 as an anime girl, as a joke. And my friends thought it was funny, so we made it into a little dating sim demo. And the reception has been unbelievable. Like, thousands of downloads. <laughs> so, we're gonna be making it to a full game with three more playable girls, starting at 682. Could we use SCP-131, the iPods, to contain SCP-173, the sculpture? As a refresher, the iPods don't eat, sleep, or blink. They just run around like house cats playing with staff while the sculpture functions like a weeping angel. You stare at it, if you blink, it will kill you. If you read the SCP-131 document, you'll note that the iPods have helped in 173's containment before. They don't blink, it's actually really easy for them. But we will not be employing them with 173 as a long-term solution. Reason being, the iPods are sentient creatures. They run around, they have fun, they enjoy themselves. We wouldn't want to lock them in a room with 173 forever. Plus, remember, the only reason we open SCP-173's box at all is because it mysteriously leaks poop and blood on the floor, and we don't want the iPods running around in that. That's unsanitary. What would happen if you introduce SCP-999 to SCP-096? Spoiler, this isn't gonna go how most of you think. As a refresher, 096 is the shy guy. If you see its face, even in a photograph, it rage states and comes to kill you. This is an artistic representation. Those don't count. You're safe. Next up, we have SCP-999. This little gooball's touch induces a mild euphoria that increases over time and has been used to treat PTSD and depression sufferers. But you gotta ask yourself one question. Is this really SCP-999? The description in the article is very clear. 999 is 120 pounds, is six feet wide and three feet tall, and it says nothing about it having eyes. That's right, just like people who talk to their Roombas like they're their pets, we have anthropomorphized this little goo ball into a mascot character because that's what humans do. This is more like what actual 999 looks like. No eyes, no 096 attack. Couple that with the durability 999 has displayed by being stomped on by SCP-682, as well as taking a bullet, and I don't think 999 is in any danger. But then we ask, what effect would 999 have on 096? People who are looking for a happier ending might imagine that 999's euphoric effect might cure 096 of its shyness and cause it to no longer attack people, maybe even being able to quell it down from an attack rage. I apologize, my friends, but I and the SCP universe as a whole are not that optimistic. As per 096's documentation, we don't even know if the entity is sapient. All we've ever seen it do is pace, sit, cry, and murder. At least with the 999682 test, we knew that 682 was capable of thoughts and feelings and emotions. It just hates us so much that it only displays rage. My hypothesis? 999 and 096 are a stalemate, and neither really affects the other. Got a different take? Discuss it in the comments. See you, buddy. Um, that is a very awfully difficult answer to give you um, on who is my favorite because uh, I'm not allowed to share that opinion. Hey there, Site42 staff. Dr. Sherman coming in from the Site42 commissary. Today's video involves alcoholic beverages, so if you're not old enough to imbibe, here's a fruit snack, go get it. In case you didn't know, the 42 in Site42 is a reference to the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. So today we're making Dr. Sherman's favorite coping mechanism for his terrible job in the darkness of the Foundation, the Pangalactic Gargle Blaster. There are many recipes, but this one is mine. In the booze department, you will need Prosecco as a base, and then absinthe, 
gin, creme de menthe, mezcal tequila, and goldschlager for flavor. For garnishments, you're gonna need a slice of lemon, obviously, an olive, minor anchovy filled because the recipe mentions fish, a sugar cube to mix with the shaker, and Mentos for fizz. Goose is our drink goblin while I do the recording today. We've tested seven different versions of this drink, but version two was our favorite, so that's what we're showing you. Start with one teaspoon of absinthe, one ounce of gin, half an ounce of creme de menthe, mezcal style tequila, and Goldschlager. From here, you add one sugar cube plus some ice. And shake, 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 shake. Strain into your glass. Fill the rest of the way with your Prosecco or otherwise bubbly. Your final measurement should be about eight ounces. From there, you add your anchovy filled olive, squeeze in the lemon, and a Mentos to make sure there's extra fizz. And what you end up with is this science fiction green complicated drinker's answer to the Long Island iced tea. Instead of not tasting like alcohol, it tastes like every kind of alcohol. And the flavor profile is wild. Slauncha, y'all. I want to show you a picture from last night that really upset me. Okay, but in my defense, Rosa bet me 50 cents that I couldn't drink all that shampoo. That's not what I wanted to do. You drank shampoo? What? No. You're the one farting bubbles. What do you get when you cross SCP-682 and Bayonetta? An objectively horrible idea! Turn an SCP-682 into an anime girl like that bad dragon needs to be any more tsundere. As if I wasn't traumatized enough by the Sisters of Cheyenne Point where you could date Clef and Bright and Kondraki. Or the SCP-3199 dating sim. Yeah, some of y'all saw this naked in the kitchen at 3 a.m. eating shredded cheese chicken man and decided, mmm, I want some of them herbs and spices. But seriously, I always want to support new SCP games being made. I want to see this one come to fruition. Go send the artists some support. They're working real hard. And you know my vote for the next SCP anime girl. Hey there, Site42 fam. It's come to my attention that not a lot of people know that we have a Site42 SCP merch store. We've commissioned art from multiple artists to make SCP-related merch. And we've got stickers for the Site42 channel. And so if you want some SCP merch, as well as helping support the Site42 channel, teespring.com slash stores slash site 42. Thank you in advance and cheers.